Hello again. This is uh, Red Hat Dan on tech. Um, last few weeks, we've been talking about containers and using containers to control what users do on a system. Um, talked about quadlets. Uh, now we're going to take a different uh, path for the next few weeks. We're going to talk about something I've been working on the last uh, six months or so, um, totally around artificial intelligence and AI. Obviously, AI is the the hot spot of the universe and uh, you know, every, everything is AI these days. And, um, what I've been working on is, um, you know, different, different parts of the AI stack. Um, and as I've looked at this, I've, uh, come up with my ideas on what Red Hat is doing with AI. Um, and again, these are my ideas. These are not official Red Hat, um, uh, topics right at this point, uh, it's still evolving. Um, but whether I look at Red Hat, you know, what Red Hat is trying to do with AI, um, this is this is my understanding, and I hopefully hopefully I'll explain, you know, help help you. And then over the next few weeks, we'll dig into different topics that I'll cover in this presentation today. Um, and I'll have other guests coming in and talking about stuff that they're working in, in underneath the AI umbrella at Red Hat. So I put together a quick presentation to try to explain my understanding of Red Hat AI, um, and uh, when I look at it, it's what I think our customers and our users of AI or any company that's starting to use AI, uh, what what are they seeing um, as they go forward? And then how, how is Red Hat looking to help them on their adventure? Um, so first of all, when we talk about AI, you have to think about there's two different ways, uh, two different ideas in AI is what's called inferencing and it's called training. Um, and the way I understand what inferencing is, is just using a trained model. So when you have an, a, you know, an AI model that's already been trained, um, you want to write code that's going to interact with that. Um, I think a lot of people out there have interacted with ChatGPT. Um, and basically that the, the GUI that you go onto with ChatGPT is, is doing inferencing, right? It's not doing any training on the model at the time. So a lot of customers right now are want to be able to extend existing tools um, to do inferencing. Uh, one way I think about this is, you know, potentially you might want to build a chat bot in it to replace or to enhance your website. Um, if you think about modern websites, you go to a website and you have to do five or six clicks, um, digging into different areas, you're doing a lot of reading, um, just to answer a question, answer a simple question. So wouldn't it be nice if, um, you know, developers would just add a chat bot and say, you know, rather than going through and clicking on uh, five or six different items, I would just be able to ask a, a, a human based question um, to the uh, website and then the website could give it, give me the answer. So developers of, you know, so companies that want to use existing AI, um, you know, the developers of a web interface needs to know how, to, you know, probably your developers inside your company probably know nothing about AI at the time that, uh, they're being asked to, you know, add AI to a specific website. So your web developers wouldn't know it. Um, so the developers don't know it. Um, so they come to Red Hat and say, you know, how can we, you know, learn about AI? How can we add AI to our our um, existing applications? Uh, Red Hat suggest, suggest, would suggest that you use Podman Desktop uh, on a Mac, Windows, or even a Linux platform. And what Podman Desktop has done, um, you know, what the developers then can do is install Podman Desktop, and they're going to quickly discover that there's a new plugin called the AI Lab, right? AI Laboratories. Um, what's really cool about the AI Labs inside of Podman Desktop is they have lots and lots of examples of different ways you might want to use um, use a AI a tool or AI model. So, um, and one of the examples will be, you know, a chatbot example. So you can actually go in, fire up the chatbot that's fired off of the, uh, using the Granite model. I'll talk a little bit later about the Granite model, um, but basically be able to interact with the chatbot and see that it works. And then the really cool thing um, is that your Red Hat will provide you source code. It's all written in Python. So fairly easy for developers to understand and they could actually look at um, the existing code and then start to convert their applications to say the web interface or whatever to use the, the um, to use the chatbot example and actually plug it in so they could actually, you know, start using from their application 
Um, and now they have basically successfully, um, you know, built an application that's based on top of an AI model and, uh, you know, mission accomplished, right? Pretty cool, uh, fairly simple for developers and Podman Desktop does a great job. It's probably about seven or eight different recipes and the recipes will be, you know, for different types of AI interactions will be growing over time. But what they're quickly gonna figure out after they got the, you know, chatbot talking to their to the AI yeah, is that it's not great at returning internal information. Um, so, you know, imagine you go to a chatbot and you ask a question about something, you know, if you go to ChatGPT or a tool like that and you ask it questions about internal information inside your company, obviously the, the AI model is not gonna know about it. So the next question is, okay, how do I make the, the model smarter? How do I make it better? Um, so Red Hat with IBM uh, announced uh, at the summit that we were open sourcing this Granite model. Um, and and uh, what Granite model, the really cool thing about Granite model is it's uh, IBM does the training and does, you know, pays, pays the money to make it a, uh, a really smart model, but they, it's fully open source model. Open is a heavily overused world, word in the world of AI. Um, and I would say that open AI is anything but open and, you know, using our definition of, of openness and that, you know, we want to have X, you know, in, in the open source world means you have access to the code and then for an AI model, that means we know where the, the model was, you know, trained, where, where the data that the model was trained on comes from. And what IBM has done is they've released the Granite model with a full, uh, all the information about you know, what it was trained on. It was also trained totally on um, open co uh, open content. Um, so the content is under proper licensing so that you could train on it. You know, one, of the, one of the problems with the closed models is that, you know, you don't know where the, the stuff was trained. So theoretically, you could end up with copywritten code or copywritten content being displayed to your users that, you know, that you unsuspectingly pulled out of an AI model. Um, so Granted is really cool. Um, not only does, do, does IBM and Red Hat um, basically allow you to understand where the data come from, but it also reveals the, um, the different criteria, the different code that's used to control and to instruct the, uh, you know, model. Um, so, uh, that was announced at the Red Hat Summit. The second thing that was announced at the Red Hat Summit uh, was this tool tooling or tools to make AI smarter. And as you can see here, I'm wearing a sweatshirt called Instruct Lab. Um, so Instruct Lab was a is an open source project to allow users to add intelligence to models. Um, so I, I like to think of Instruct Lab as you know at least for the on the open side. Um, to be a chance for us to to basically build the uh, Wikipedia of knowledge. Imagine an AI model that you know, users can contribute knowledge to. Um, and one of, one of the key things about Instruct Lab is that uh, Instruct Lab allows you to add knowledge and skills. So in the world of AI, um, knowledge is. I think most people understand what knowledge is, and I, what I like to say is I. I have a lot of knowledge about different subjects. Um, and then we have skills. And the way I would describe a skill is uh, a human asking me for some of that knowledge. If I don't understand the question, I don't understand what the question is. So say say you came up to me and were talking to me in Czech and asked me for some knowledge, I wouldn't understand Czech. So therefore I wouldn't be able to reveal the knowledge. So a skill would be, um, you know, me being able to understand the question and then I could reveal my knowledge. So similarly in a in a AI model, um, you know, that that interface between the the user asking the question and the AI model understanding what the question was in order for it to reveal its knowledge. Um, so what uh, Instruct Lab allows users to do is both increase uh, fairly simply add knowledge and add um, skills to an AI model. Um, so and uh, our example here where the customer has basically gotten to the point of, of um, you know, having the ability to interact with an AI model, um, they quickly realized that the AI model did not have the knowledge or the skill, did not have the skills to reveal decent data to the user when the user asked it. 
So really what the customer needs to do is make the AI smarter at that point. Um, so engineer use uh, using Podman desktops, come to discover Instruct Lab being available on the system. And Instruct Lab is all about adding knowledge or skills to an AI model. Um, in the open source worlds, we're providing mechanism for people to reveal their knowledge and their skills, and then slowly build up and make instruct and make granite model um, smarter over time. Uh, but you also potentially would want to make, you know, just add sort of your secret company information to your own private instruct lab. So, you know, if you were working for Acme Inc., you might want to build an Acme Inc. granite version that had not only the public you know, the open, open source knowledge, but not open knowledge, but also have your own private knowledge in it. You would not have to reveal that to the world. So we want to add knowledge to an AI model and, and, and uh, using Granite is fairly simple. I mean, using Instruct Lab is fairly simple. You have to basically ask and answer three questions. So give some number of questions, three to five questions to an AI model um, and then, um, be able to, uh, there's, there's several steps to it. So the second step is to, is called a, um, uh, basically a teaching model. So it's a, able to take up three to five questions and answers and explain, expand that into hundreds of questions and answers. And then the final step is actually to start training. Um, so actually taking all those questions and answers and adding that data um, or that skill set to the uh, model. And then over time, the model gets uh, smarter. Um, so at this point, you would need to train the model. So that takes your questions and answers and the additional knowledge you gave to it. And we'll start to train the model. And the goal with, yeah, Podman Desktop and Instruct Lab is that you will see some improvement. So, so you have asked the same question again. Now the question, now the model will give you a, a smarter answer or a better answer to your question. And then, um, so once, once you've successfully done this with Instruct Lab, you're going to quickly realize that you want to add a ton more knowledge and skills to the model. So, um, you want to take, you know, a lot of your company data or a lot of, you know, company specific data and actually continue to train the model. So this model becomes, you know, the AI model for your company internal, you know, with internal data. Um, one of the problems with this is you're going to quickly realize that your laptop is too slow. Um, so the training actually takes a considerable amount of time on systems. It uses a ton of GPUs and, you know, doing this on a simple Mac or a windows laptop, or even a, a, a Linux laptop with a GPU is you know, in no way going to be sufficient. This could take hours to days, uh, for training. So. Customer would come back to Red Hat at that point and ask for help with training. You know, how can we make this training stuff work faster? Um, and this is where Rel AI comes into the equation. So at this point, uh, we'll, you know, we would introduce you to the concepts of Rel AI. And Rel AI is, you know, um, a system we're looking to work with hardware vendors um, to set up multiple sh systems with uh, lots and lots of GPUs on them. So four to eight GPUs, fairly beefy systems, huge amounts of memory. Uh, these machines are not going to be inexpensive. Um, they're going to be, you know, in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, but, you know, these, mod these are the machines that most companies are using for training at this point. Obviously, you can use cloud services for training, but it's very, very expensive. Um, so what we're doing with REL AI is helping you to get um, an AI system that is pre installed with rel based software um, and then it lights up your gpus uh, rel ai service provides mechanisms for uploading the knowledge and skills so rel ai is going to be based is based is really primarily for training um, using instruct lab training on top of the granite model um, so it's a, an appliance for actually adding knowledge and skills to the granite model using instruct lab um, the training would go much faster in this type of environment and you you continue to add lots and lots of knowledge to the system um, that once the model has been trained, then you could release it back to your AI developers sitting on their uh, Podman desktops or in, and running the AI in, in the cloud or whatever. Um, and then you could basically go through a, 
a rapid development process as the AI's can, AI models continue to get smarter and smarter. You get a mark improvement with more knowledge added. And then at a certain point, you're going to be adding so much knowledge, even a new RHEL AI system cannot uh, keep up with all the skills and knowledge that you're going to be adding. Um, and you're going to need additional RHEL AI systems at that point. So the, the idea would be as you grow um, this environment, you're probably going to need more than one system to, to handle the workload of, of continuing to keep your model uh, up to speed. Um, but once you get to more than one model, all of a sudden the training and you're, 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 you're spanning multiple machines for doing the training, you're spanning multiple, uh, you're somehow going to get the knowledge onto different machines. You want one machine to do 50% or some percentage of the training, the other machines do the other portion as you get two or three, four machines, um, all of a sudden it's like, okay, I need some tooling to orchestrate it. And at that point, uh, you know, you'll need an orchestrator. Uh, and of course we were looking at Kubernetes and Red Hat would recommend that the customer look into OpenShift AI at that point. Um, so OpenShift AI is uh, more general purpose than uh, RHEL AI is. RHEL AI, again, is just about training the, the Granite model, the instruct lab training of the Granite model. Um, but RHEL AI could be, you could use it for setting up, you know, large scale inferencing, but, um, but it also will work with large scale training. So the, uh, it will be fully cognizant um, and able to absorb your RHEL AI systems as OpenShift nodes into the OpenShift cluster. Um, and at that point, you'll get to, uh, you know, the nirvana that we all desire, which would be you end up with applications uh, running AI models inside of your company. These AI models would be, you know, trained uh, and using Instruct Lab um, and um, fully open on the granite model. So you'd have indemnification from Red Hat and IBM, and then you could use OpenShift AI to really, you know, increase the speed of training across and orchestrate it across multiple multiple nodes, perhaps using some some nodes from the cloud, um, but fully environment to them. So over the next few weeks, we will be uh, bringing in different people to talk much deeper into how each one of these technologies work. Um, so thank you for listening to me and hopefully uh, uh, we can help you on your Red Hat AI or your, into your AI adventures going forward.